and welcome back. Now today we're going to talk about a very innocuous looking object and it is this two channel relay module. Now you wouldn't think something this simple and fairly straightforward and frankly somewhat unexciting could cause such a stir. But let's talk about this and see exactly where the problems that I've found on the Arduino forum stem from. Basically this is a dual relay controlled by the Arduino and the great thing about it is that these little tiny chips on here are in fact opto isolators which means that the Arduino when it's running through here has absolutely no knowledge at all of anything that's happening up here. It's treating it effectively like an LED. So your Arduino is effectively protected from anything happening at this end, the sharp end where you might be connecting mains electronics even and all it knows about is a little LED buried inside these plastic modules. Those plastic modules are in fact EL817s and I don't think we're going to get close enough to see them but you never know, you might better just make them out there. And in fact they're probably upside down like most things on this camera. Anyway, let's have a look at the the computer screen here. Now you'll see the EL817s, they've only got four four pins on them which basically means one half is connected to an LED and the other half is an open-ended transistor. In fact I have a circuit diagram we can have a look at which is this one here and it's this element here we're interested in. As you can see pin 1 and pin 2 are a simple LED and pin 4 and 3 it's an open base opto transistor really. So from the aspect of the Arduino, all it knows is it's driving, or at least not driving, it's syncing the current through the LED. If you notice here it says VCC, so you supply your 5 volts here. The module, that's, that's this module here, already has a limiting resistor on it here, and it has an LED to display which channel it is that's on. Now, although there's two on here, you really can treat these as two identical halves. In fact, this whole picture look, it's two of the same. They're identical. So, what this means for the Arduino is that if you want to drive some, some noisy electronics or some electronics that you couldn't possibly run off an Arduino, mains for example, or just some heavy duty stuff, even motors, um, this is an absolutely ideal way of doing it because your Arduino is protected to the nth degree. However, the way the, this module here is set up by default means you're not quite as protected as you might think you are. And we'll have a look at that in a second. First of all though, let's just connect some four lines of code or thereabouts to switch this on and see how it all hangs together. So if we go to our code window, this one here, now this is simplicity itself, all we're using are two digital output pins, in this case three and four. I've chosen these arbitrarily, but it could be any two you choose. We're setting them up as output, which confuses some people because you think, hang on a minute, I thought you said we were syncing current, not supplying it. But you have to set the output pin as an output pin, whether it's supplying or syncing. It's most certainly not input mode. You might be thinking that the current flows into the Arduino and should therefore be an input pin. No, input it means digital input, not, not current type input. So we define them as output and then because of the way the circuit is defined we're supplying current here on the VCC so that's just a 5 volt supply from your Arduino board it comes along here, flows through the LED, back through this other LED that you can see, rather than being buried inside this black plastic package. And then where it says IN1, that goes to the pin on your Arduino. Namely, either pin 1 or pin 2. And as we've got two channels, we'll define two. So initially, we're going to define one of these as high, which effectively switches that one off and prevents current running through it. And one we're going to define as low, which allows the current to run through it. Now, just as in the case of when you're supplying current from the Arduino, a 40 milliamp total is the absolute maximum per pin. 
and there's you can't supply all digital pins at 40 milliamps and hope to get away with it either. There's a maximum which I can't remember off the top of my head. But we're not going to be doing very much here. We're probably talking um, 10 milliamps, maybe 20 tops, because after all it is going through two LEDs. Then we're going to delay for a second, and then we're going to flip the relay output, or at least the digital pin output, which will in turn flip the relays. So what was high on pin 1 is now low, and what was low is now high. So current will flow into relay pin 1, but will be prevented from flowing into relay pin 2. And then we're going to have another little delay, but a slightly longer one. So let's see how this all hangs together when we connect it up to the board. And I have preloaded it because I know it's very frustrating watching code download. Right, so there it goes. It's loading now. And the first one is on and off and on and off. And basically these two relays are just toggling now. So this one's on to begin with. Then it goes to this one. Then it goes back in. And the delay is shorter on this one, one second, and three seconds on here, just like the code showed. Now you might think, well, that doesn't seem very difficult, actually. It's what I expected true. However, if we look at the circuit diagram again, of what's happening here. Now, this circuit diagram shows or expects there to be a supply here on VCC for the LED in the optocoupler. And you notice... There's a supply here, JD VCC. It doesn't actually show where that supply is coming from. But on the board, if we show the board quickly, there's a little tiny jumper here that says JD VCC. And that is connected by default to the VCC pin that we have supplied here on this board, which is coming from our Arduino. Now, to have our Arduino supply the LED is absolutely fine. Having our Arduino supply effectively the other side of the circuit is not a good idea. Because it means your Arduino is no longer electrically isolated from the circuit. Apart from being connected on the positive side, we've also had to make a return journey on the ground side as well. And that's not really what we want. Just have another look at that circuit again. And you'll see that... All we really want is two pins. We want power coming in and then the Arduino to sync it here. So really, we don't want the power supply on here to be on at all. And we don't want the ground to be on here at all. What we want is just that. Pin in, source out. We'll allow the power to be connected to this side of the circuit and only this side of the circuit but what we're going to do is disconnect this other side so that no longer has any power at all this side is now electrically dead and separate from our Arduino power comes in here through the optimal isolators and is sunk by the two pins on the Arduino alternatively now as you can see the lights are still already flashing or still flashing because there is a circuit here that is being made. What's not happening is that the relays are being switched on because they've got no power to switch on. What we really want is a separate isolated power supply to supply this half of the circuit. If we look back at our circuit diagram we're talking about this part here and it is totally and utterly separate from anything at this end. Even though this little IC, this opto isolator, is one package Internally, there's no connection between the LED and the opto transistor the other side. So let's connect up an external power supply and see what happens. Now I'm going to connect this up and then hopefully I'll be able to speed up the video because it must be very frustrating watching somebody connect up wires. Here goes. And there we are. Now I'm running this little tiny breadboard power supply here. And it's only going in to the other half of this circuit. So this half, the Arduino side, knows nothing about what's going on the other side. All the Arduino thinks is it's lighting up an LED. 
and in fact it is lighting up a real LED as you can see plus the one you can't see inside these optocouplers that's all the Arduino knows about and there's no need to have the ground control line connected at all you just have power in and then being sunk by the Arduino pins brilliant so now we have the power supply that's totally separate supplying the other half of this circuit remember by the other half we mean all this here so the opto transistor the power transistor here the relay coil and the protection diode all this is fired up by JD VCC and that's what we're supplying now with this alternative power supply so what are the things then on the Arduino forum have been mentioned that even I sort of was unaware of to be quite honest but apparently there is a an issue with this board that has caused several people to raise queries about what was going on well for that we need to look at our code again and think about what's happening so back in our code window here we define our pins as as output pins fine unfortunately the instant that we've defined them as output pins they can either sync or source current now initially the pin mode is going to be set to output but the way current can flow is they are both set low instantly so once this command has been executed and whilst it's starting right in doing this command here pin 1 is already low because we've not told it otherwise and apparently in the time it takes for this command to be executed current is starting to flow through relay pin 1 because we haven't set it high until here and that can cause problems with some circuits just in those few microseconds that occur between this statement on pin on line 7 and this statement here on line 12 obviously the longer the delay between setting the output and setting the relay pin high the worse the problem is going to get so the advice given on the Arduino forum is to set the relay pin 1 and 2 to high first so if we look at the code window now you can see I've added these two lines here to set them high initially then we set them as, as we always did to output and then high and low respectively now as you can see from the circuit the board down here nothing really has changed if I reset it off it goes nothing much has happened except that the relay that turns on first is now not trying to turn on before we actually allow it it's prevented by these two statements here I would suggest that you look at the digital right on the Arduino forum because it does contain more information about this but it's just a point to be aware of that if you set something as output it will allow current to be sunk immediately until you set it high which may affect circuits especially timing critical ones so let's just have a quick look at what you might be able to buy for these um, relays now as you can see here on the screen this is the uh, same smart one probably at a price most people will uh, look elsewhere to be quite honest and as you can see this is a, a dual one though and i think some of the clones are probably based on this same smart one but as you can see down here in this little uh, picture here you can see there's a quad one quad with uh, network controller i've even seen them up to 16 relays on a board so if you've got enough pins you might be pushing it on arduino uno but uh, you can get quite a few relays connected now if we go over to ebay very quickly now this is the sort of thing i've got a simple dual relay module 99 pence which is about what one dollar forty these days even less yeah about that one dollar forty now that's from their besta i'm not uh, endorsing the seller by any means it just happens to be one that uh, came up on ebay when i searched for it and as i say you can get single relays dual quad 816 probably a, a whole ton more but they're all based on very much the same thing where you have these little opto couplers built in good stuff okay so there it is that's what you can get back to the main video now there's one final point that i'm going to talk to you about on this board and for that i'm going to have to disconnect it all so this is how the board is supplied 
um, with a jumper on here which says JD VCC and it's automatically put a jumper onto VCC which is the same pin as this one here underneath that connected which means your Arduino supply will also supply the other side of the circuit and for testing this is absolutely fine and indeed for some circuits this is absolutely fine as long as you're aware that your Arduino is not actually opto-isolated from this so I'd always recommend using a separate supply however that's not the downside this jumper looks like it should be moved either from here or to here I mean after all that's what jumpers do whatever you do do not do this all you're going to do here is short out VCC and ground of your Arduino supply the one that's coming in here so do not move this jumper this is a very poor design I don't know why they've got that uh, second ground pin in there like that unless it's for convenience in connecting your alternative supply but frankly it's just asking I believe for trouble with people experimenting and they think oh, what happens when I move that to that well there could be a puff of smoke and the voltage regulator on your Arduino board could be very very upset with you so just bear that in mind so there we are who would have thought that a simple relay board like this could contain so many gotchas as well as the advantages of protecting your Arduino from all the nasty bits on the relays and of course remember there are built-in protection dials on here so you didn't have to worry about any of that all you need to do is connect your Arduino in here it will light up the LED end of easy you bet it was that was easy quite so thanks for watching I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting remember you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe okay thanks for watching and see you in the next video